Well, it's still winter, I still can't ride, and I'm sick of not talking about motorcycles. So let's hop in the time machine and return to Florida 2014. And there I just lost my subscribers who were science fiction fans for terribly mixing metaphors there. Anyway, New Year's Eve 2013. I officially accepted a new job. My first full-time permanent position in many years. And there was much rejoicing. So I gave my two weeks notice to the old job because it's the right thing to do but I decided to push my start date at the new job out for three weeks so I could have a week off in between. When you're contracting, you never know when you're just gonna get told not to come back the next day. I had a fair amount of money saved up. So I decided to blow a little bit of that and fly myself to someplace warm and rent a motorcycle for a couple of days just to celebrate and just for the novelty of being able to ride a motorcycle someplace warm in January. I know those of you who live in the South are used to it. We're not. Deal with it. So I did a bunch of research on airfares and uh, Eagle Rider locations, which is where I rented the motorcycle from, and uh, ended up flying myself to Orlando, Florida, for four days, two of which I would be renting a brand new Harley Davidson Street Glide. Now I was by no means a cruiser guy at this time. I still had my Honda Pacific Coast 800, which I love very much, so this is really my very first experience on a cruiser. So after picking up the bike and a little orientation, I saddled up and rode a Harley for the first time. It didn't take me long to get used to it and ride it like it should be ridden. This was my first time using a heel toe shifter like most cruisers have. I liked it so much I just put one on my Honda Shadow Ace 1100. The map's hard to see, but my first day, because there was rain to the north, I took a route to the south that took me inland for a little while and then up A1A along the coast. It's no corner carver, but the Harley was the right tool for the environment. With no curves and no particular place to go and no particular hurry, it was really comfortable to just sit back and enjoy the ride. Unfortunately, along this part of the coast, you couldn't really see much of the beach or the ocean because of all the condos built up along the side. But after a bit of riding, I did eventually reach somewhere that was really interesting to me. Kennedy Space Center. Like I said, I'm a serious space nut. But even then, I came to Florida to rent a motorcycle. And I couldn't justify the price of admission or the time to go exploring Kennedy Space Center itself. But I did stumble across the Astronaut Hall of Fame, and I decided to stop in there for a quick look. It's not Kennedy Space Center, but they still had all kinds of cool stuff. They had Gus Grissom's Mercury spacesuit, the actual Sigma-7 Mercury spacecraft, that thing is tiny, and all kinds of Apollo 11 memorabilia. But this one particularly interested me, the actual ham radio that astronaut Owen Garriott took on the space shuttle with him to make the first amateur radio contacts from an orbiting spacecraft. After getting my geek on for a while, it was time to hit the road and head back to Orlando. Wow. 
I was lucky enough to pick a hotel that had a brew pub right across the street, so that's where I spent most of the night. The next day, I took a northern loop heading out to Daytona. It wasn't bike week, but it was worth visiting anyway. Then I planned to head up A1A a bit more, turn around at St. Augustine, and take an inland route back to Orlando just for a change of pace. When I rolled into town, the first thing I saw was Daytona International Speedway. Yes, that one. And I'll tell you, it's huge. It's much bigger than it looks, especially when you're going past it at 30 miles an hour instead of in a NASCAR doing a 200. I just missed a track tour, so instead of waiting an hour, I decided to skip it. Besides, I've been to plenty of racetracks in the Northeast anyway. But I did pop inside and checked out the displays, including some cutaway race cars, which was pretty cool. From there, it was only a few minutes up the road to Motorsport Marketing, home of Grassroots Motorsports and Classic Motorsports magazines. I'd been a subscriber for years, and I even interviewed with them for a job at one point, so I figured I'd stop in and say hi. By then, it was lunchtime, and at their suggestion, I headed over to Terry's place for lunch. That validates one of my main rules of motorcycle touring. If you want to know the good places to eat, ask a local. Then it was back on the bike and back at the coast. North of Daytona, the beaches were public and the road ran right alongside of them. This is what I came to Florida to do, ride a Harley along the beach. Keep in mind, this is in January. was like this for the next 50 miles all the way to St. Augustine. I occasionally stop to take a glamour shot of the bike, and sometimes a not so glamour shot of myself. At St. Augustine I turned inland, and I didn't take many pictures or video, I just decided to kick back and enjoy the ride. The next day, I packed my bags, took the bike back to Eagle Rider with 500 extra miles on it. They gave me a ride to the airport where I picked up a Krispy Kreme, something you can't get in Massachusetts, and then I hopped on a plane and came back to this crap. Just to know that